This is two-step problem solving, a worked example, and homework. Johnny is marching home, as in the homecoming parade. He is marching at a steady four meters per second. He's been marching for 30 minutes. The parade route is like forever. All of a sudden it starts to rain, and everyone starts moving faster. By the time they make it into the field house, they're going 12 meters per second. It took Johnny six minutes to make it to the field house from when it started raining. How long was the parade route? Okay, we're gonna use the guess method, but we're gonna use it with a little twist. We're going to have a graph showing what's happening to the velocity over time. Because it's changing, we really have a two-part problem here and we need some way of organizing all of this data. And the velocity time graph is a good way to organize it. Okay, I've got my velocity time graph drawn. Now we're gonna throw some numbers in there. We know he starts out marching at a steady four meters per second. So I know that this number right here is four meters per second. And that's my starting velocity, so I might as well call it V um, I. And then I know that he ends up going 12 meters per second when he hits the field house. So my ending velocity, Vf, is equal to 12 meters per second. I know the time he spends at this four meters per second, so this time right here, this line right here, all of this time is a long, drawn out 30 minutes. I call that T1. And I know when it starts raining and they rush to this field house, that this time right here is six minutes. Let's stop and talk for a minute. Realize that this drawing isn't a scale, but I'm not trying to get it to scale. I just want a place to record what's happening so I can get those numbers and I can look at how the problem sets up. So I'm not trying to do a detailed graph. I'm just doing a sketch of what's happening. And then of course the big deal is what are we hunting for? Well, we want to know how long the parade route is or the distance total that he covers. Okay, we've got this part right here. And in that part, we know we have a constant velocity. In other words, the acceleration is zero. And then we've got this part over here. It's kind of hard for me to highlight. But it covers, well, hopefully you get the idea. It covers this area in here. And it also includes these guys right up here. In this green spot, the acceleration is not zero. So we're going to have to treat that as a problem with acceleration. So we have two different problems. The yellow, where we have a constant velocity or acceleration equal to zero. And the green, where we have an acceleration. We're going to find the distance in each one of those spots. So we're going to find this distance. And then we're going to find this distance. And we're going to add them together and figure out the total distance. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use the old traditional df formula. df equals di. di is just the initial starting distance, which in this case, as it often is, is zero. We already said the acceleration is zero, and zero times anything is zero, so this whole term becomes zero. So we can simplify this equation. Okay, we've got the equation simplified. Now we're going to plug our numbers in. But as we start to look at that, we realize we've got 30 minutes up here. And over here, we have meters per second. So we have to change that 30 minutes into a second rating. So 30 minutes is 1,800 seconds. So now we can plug in our numbers. And we get df is equal to 7,200 meters. Notice the second units cancel out, so we've got the right unit, which is meters. So we know how far he went with he was marching at a constant rate. What about when it started raining? If we go back up to the problem again, we don't have an acceleration. I mean, there is one. Our speed is changing, 
but we don't know what it is. So we can't use the same equation that's over to the left. And in fact, the three best equation friends all have an acceleration in them. So, or else a distance. So we're going to have to use that fourth equation. We're hunting for d, so that's a good thing to have. We know what the starting velocity is in this section, because the starting velocity is just that 4 meters per second. That's what he was going before he started running from the rain. We know what the ending velocity is. That ending velocity is 12 meters per second. And we know how long he was doing that running. It was 6 minutes, which we have to quickly change to seconds. So that equation is going to work. So let's go ahead and plug our numbers in and then solve the problem. So our final answer for this part, how far he goes when he's running, is 2,880 meters. So to get the total distance, we just add the two together. So we get the total distance is 10,080 meters, or 10.08 kilometers, which is, my goodness, almost five miles. No wonder he was complaining about that parade route. The last part of this video you have to do yourself. So we've got this freshman float picture where the freshman float is doing fine, and then the gas pedal gets stuck, and then it crashes. So this is a two-part problem. It's similar than the other, as the other one. Write it up, find the answer, and bring it in tomorrow and hand it in. Thank you very much.